research, we have some, some traditional really journalists and some internet activists in some Eastern Europe, people who are only interested in Russia. And I hope for all of your all of you there will be something interesting um, this evening. In the name of Reporters Without Borders, yeah, I say a very warm welcome. And for Reporters Without Borders, Russia is always a country of special interest, as you can imagine. It's not anymore one of the most dangerous countries of the world, if we take the number of killed or imprisoned journalists, um, because sometimes people think about Russia like that. But uh, in our annual press freedom index, it's ranked on rank 148 out of 179, so not that high. So we tonight would like to ask a bit why, where this rank comes from, actually. In the past, we had reported that borders, we always tried to have a closer look um, on the structural problems of our press freedom in Russia. In 2007, here the, in Germany, we published a report on regional media in Russia. Um, recently, just we published a report on, German, uh, on Russian television. Um, and this actually basically is a part of our ongoing campaign before the Sochi Olympics, where we try to shed some light on the Russian media freedom reality. And um, and television for us was very important because 90% of political information in Russia is consumed via television, but there is still some 10% of probably something more where some political discourse is happening as well, and that is um, amongst other media, the internet as well. And tonight we would like to talk about, uh, yeah, about the online media landscape itself, um, about um, recent internet laws, about technical aspects of surveillance in a country who offered recently asylum to Edward Snowden, Snowden a, a whistleblower who actually revealed um, lots of surveillance globally, and he's now uh, yeah um, for asylum in Russia, a country which does lots of surveillance as well. We wanted to talk about the control, the active control of debates on the internet, about the tightened control before the Sochi Games, and um, I'm happy to discuss all these questions with two very distinguished experts, the journalist colleagues, with Alexei Sidorenko and Andrei Soldatov. Alexei is an internet observer and blogger who has been actively involved in the last years in Global Voices, and there in a special project called Runet. Um, actually explaining the Russian internet and blush Russian blogosphere for non-Russian speakers. And I think it's a very fruitful and enriching resource if you are interested in, in um, Russian um, internet sphere. And for reporter Clark Borders, he's covering the developments in the Russian internet and Russian media landscape as a, our internet correspondent for Russia. And Andrei Soldatov, he's an investigative journalist and editor of Agentura.ru, which is actually one of the best sources about activities of Russian secret services and obviously deals with lots of internet surveys as well. He has been working for Novaya Gazeta and various international media as well. Here on the panel, we would like to have a discussion for about 30 minutes, and then I would like to open it up to your questions for all the questions which we probably didn't discuss beforehand here. And just to get a first idea for those of you who, who aren't experts for the Russian media landscape, Alexei, I would just like to ask you to give us a brief idea about the number of internet users, how many people actually are really using the internet? Is it the internet only in Moscow phenomena? Well, I think uh, in 2013, uh, the connectivity in, in most of the uh, uh, in most of the cities is not a problem. So I would say that although there are no exact numbers uh, about the p internet penetration, but I guess it's more than a half and it, and it uh, varies between 50 and 70 percent.